So how it's going to work for the rest of the talk is I'm going to ask Professor Zizek some questions and then for the last 15 Just to 20 like, minutes. If you want to survive this evening, don't ever call me again Professor Zizek. I was waiting for you to tell me. <laughs> what did I do? Did I rape your mother in public to, to humiliate me so Careful, much? My mom's watching. <laughs> Please call. No, because Slavon. when you call me Professor Zizek, I'll, where is the professor here? It cannot be me. <laughs> right. Slavon, Thanks. as you wish. Thanks. Okay. So... Um, Jordan Peterson yes. was at the Union last I week. I know, our great spiritual yeah. man. Yeah. And he said that um, he hoped that the Democrats got badly beaten in the midterms so it would give them a kick up the arse, effectively. And uh, you said in a recent interview with Owen Jones that you think that Clinton is the problem, not Trump. So I was wondering whether you agree with Professor Peterson and whether you think ah, that the Democrats got the kick... you can call Professor, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I got your point. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and whether you think that the Democrats got the kick up the arse they needed this week in the elections? Uh, I am... OK, let's not lose too much time with this. I just wanted to say that I'm quite convinced with some analysis which show that the reasons of this relative success only in the Senate of Republicans is the obvious incredible injustice of American electoral system for the Senate you know the principle, each state gets two senators. So you have a small state, small by the number of population, like I don't know, Montana and so on, which gets the same number of senators as California, although California has around 60 times more population. And it's strict. Do you know that the Democrats nonetheless got some 15, 20 million more of the votes, you know? But you know, where do I more fundamentally disagree with Peterson? On the one hand, it's not that I am for, in any sense, for Trump. He is a horror. But maybe this is my wildly Leninist, speculative, brutal mind. I I'm always obsessed by this idea. I don't blame them. They can be well-meaning and so on. That, again, as you said and I said, the problem is the disintegration of this old centrist liberal democratic consensus. That, and this is what is really in crisis. And I see Trump as somebody who further undermines this consensus and thus create a need and maybe even a chance for a new consensus. I claim no Bernie Sanders and so on and so on, no democratic socialist without Trump. Now, I know this is an extremely dangerous game because some idiots who uh, criticized me at this point <laughs> use this idea, but this is the same as to say some crazy communists did say in 33, it's better to have Hitler in power now, the fronts are clear. No, I'm not saying this. It's a specific statement about the United States. For example, I am not saying that you should get a Boris Johnson <laughs> prime minister or France Marine Le Pen. European states are organized in a much more uh, centralized, different way. So uh, back to uh, Jordan Peterson. First, I, I think that with all his pseudo-scientific reference, you know, he cannot talk about women and marriage without mentioning lobsters, apes, <laughs> or whatever, all of them, that uh, if you go to the end in this direction, mirroring uh, relations of domination among animals, uh, projecting them onto humans, then we humans are doomed, my God, because Humanity as such is unnatural. What is the idea of equality, freedom, and so on and so on? This is human madness. And not only this, I cannot go into this now, but my first point is, and I will quote here somebody who is also my enemy, but a little bit more honest, uh, Steven Pinker, so-called rational optimist. I saw on YouTube a debate between two of them where Jordan Peterson went strongly in this direction. Today there is so much violence and so on. And then uh, Steve Pinker said, sorry, your facts are totally wrong. Like, no, if you look at it globally with all the horror, you have here those knife crimes and so on. The last decades are still 
much better than any time in history, and so on and so on. So first, I doubt many of his facts as to his theories. First, uh, I was not in the sense that he uses it, but I think at the beginning, not that I liked him, I think he became famous for his brutal reaction to some transgender people's idea, he, she, he, it, whatever. I don't agree with him, but I think he did draw attention to some problems there. There I had not a sympathy, but half understanding. Then catastrophe emerged when he fell into this stupid trap and started to use the term, which is today the main term of contemporary right, cultural Marxism. And it would be so interesting, I don't want to talk too much, to follow, to deploy in front of you the entire background of this nation. It's incredible. There is a whole conspiracy theory narrative. It goes like this. After communist revolutions, direct political, uh, 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 failed in early 20s, communist, Comintern and Lenin, whoever was there, Stalin, decided that we failed because we underestimated the strength of the Christian moral convictions of Western people. So we should first undermine them morally. And this is why it's a beautiful theory, I like it. Uh, through the detour of some Argentinian millionaire, they financed uh, 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 Frankfurt School, uh, Western Marxism, which then culminates in today's, uh, in today's what they call cultural Marxism. Okay, to cut a long story short, I talk too much, I know I'm totally opposed to this narrative. I think that today's political correctness and so on and so on, its failure is not that it's too fanatically Marxist, it's precisely that it's not Marxist. That is to say, basic question of social power, economy and so on, it obfuscates these powers, these questions, sorry, as cultural problems, and so on and so on. Then there is the third moment. I'm not giving you now full critique. I cannot have just, uh, just mapping the topic. Where I find him, Peterson, even more problematic, his attitude, he wants to be a wise guy, wisdom, giving advice to people, Jung, Jungian approach, and so on and so on. Here I react like Goebbels. I pull out my gun. Like, uh, I have such a distrust towards any form of wisdom. Wisdom is for me, by definition, stupidity. You know what is wisdom? Wisdom is totally opportunistic. I'll give you a simple example. In my country, let's say you do something risky and you succeed. Then I can immediately comment on your success by five, ten proverbs, you know, like, we have a, it rhymes nicely in Slovene, only those who risk profit or whatever, this type of uh, justifying risking. Then let's say you fail. We have again a series of wonderful vulgar proverbs, like my most popular one, you cannot urinate against the wind, you know, and so <laughs> on. This is, wisdom is so deeply, and I think the greatest of our traditions, at least European, Plato, Plato, ancient Greek philosophy, or Christianity, they are absolutely anti-wisdom. Anti Jesus Christ is a madman. I mean, in this sense of socially disruptive and so on. You know, if nothing else, the traditional form of wisdom always thinks in circular terms. What arises will fall down, everything returns to dust. And the notion of injustice is always the notion of somebody who should stick to his or their particular role, gets caught in a hubris too much, but balance has to be dis, uh, restored. This is the very opposite of Christianity and of Plato. The basic idea of Plato is Plato's idealism. In, in this sense, I am a materialist, idealist, whatever it is, uh, is that you are, go on in your daily life, stupid daily life, you search for pleasures, then you have a mega experience, religious, philosophical, even erotic love, and your whole life is destabilized. 
Are we aware how non-organic, traumatic, brutal thing a true passionate love is? Again, a vulgar example that I like to use. Let's say you are not in love. You live your promiscuous life, you drink with friends, one night stand here, there, and so on. Then you fall in love. All this stability is destroyed. Everything is focused onto something. That's what's so great. You find this in Christianity. You find this also in other religions. I don't want to go into it. You find this in Plato's idealism. You know, Plato's basic reaction was it, uh, the way Plato describes Socrates when he's thinking. It's really like a hysteric reaction of this. Ah, he just stood there, uh, immobilized, and so on, and so on. So I am for abstraction, for violent difference, for I am absolutely against any holistic approach. 